So I walked into a bakery. I immediately became angered because it's not a typical retail experience. It's not like they have product and, and a certain amount is, is in stock and, uh, you know, you can choose from a thing. It's like whatever they feel like almost. It's like, yeah, we made this one loaf of bread and it's the only one we got. Oh, we got these interesting like cinnamon things and there's three of them and I don't even know what they cost. I mean, again, it's a situation without rules and I don't care how, uh, you know, fancy or, or gourmet it is. You know, once we break away from that structure, I, who knows what I'm doing? And they want me to pay with my phone? Like, that, that's a very sophisticated uh, ask for a place that's just, you know, uh, putting yeast in an oven and selling whatever comes out with no plan. Steve Wenner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to take an updated look at setting up laps for your Windows devices now that the latest account management policies have been built in to the actual Intune GUI. No more custom OMA URIs, if that was a problem for you. Am I going where? Yes, I am going to Paris. Why do you ask? You think this will be an issue for me? Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. Some quick updates before we get started. Uh, if you're not like me and you do get out of your basement and you do travel, uh, ironically, you're going to find me out there. So there's uh, two upcoming events I'm going to be at. Uh, the first is the MEM Summit, Modern Endpoint Management Summit. This is all the way in Paris, so we're leaving the country for this. Um, I think this is a picture of the session. Is it right here? I hate when we do this because it's not here. I'm pretending. You realize it. I'm going to be presenting on the ZeroTouch.ai platform uh, with uh, Kais, who's their CEO and founder. This is going to be a great session. We're going to be talking about helping uh, MSPs adopt and manage Intune with some incredible new technologies. So that's going to be really exciting. So if you're if you're in that area, you know, make sure you register for the session. I'm going to put the link below. Uh, and if you're just out there, you know, come and say hi. It's always good to talk to folks. Right after that, we're going to be at the Mall of America, which I've never been to. I'm a big fan of malls, so this is going to be big for me. And I'm presenting. There's three sessions. So the first session, I'm going to be presenting with my friend, uh, Suchetta, who's a brilliant Microsoft MVP. We're going to be talking modern endpoint manage with zero trust strategies. You know, this is a big topic for me. Then I'm going to be doing a session with... Uh, Two awesome people, two friends of mine, Nathan and Haley. We're going to be talking about when to use Intune versus when to code something in the graph, right? Which way is faster? It's going to be an interesting session, maybe a little philosophical. I don't know. It depends how everyone's feeling that day. And finally, uh, it's going to be me, James, and Rudy. And we are going to be talking about autopilot. So, I mean, what else is there to say? We're all things autopilot. So... You know, if you want to hear it all, whether it's troubleshooting, uh, experiences, best practices, the whole nine, right? Uh, all three of these sessions, I, I can't believe I'm even going to MMS again, let alone uh, presenting with these amazing folks, right? Really incredible. Uh, it's just going to be incredible. So that's an update on what's going on. So if you're going to any of these events, hit me up. Let me know on Discord. Uh, don't be shy. Come say hi and we'll, uh, and uh, yeah. All right, so quite a while ago, I don't remember when, uh, I was too lazy to go look up the date. We took a look at setting up uh, updated lapse policy for Windows 11, specifically uh, 24H2 and later. Um, now, one of the things that was added was the automatic account management, right? And what this was is this gave us an account that was managed from lapse right and we can put a prefix to it and we can randomize part of the name as opposed to us setting the policies on our own account which is what we used to have to do um so that worked great the only downside was all of this had to be set through oma uri and if you're not familiar with that that's where you're actually typing out the policies and looking up the values so a little bit old school here and as far as ongoing management it could make things difficult because you know, scaling and having other folks review, everyone would have to be up on how to do this. That's not to say if you're an Intune admin, you shouldn't have to know how to type out OMA URI policies. Uh, one could argue that, you know, it's a rite of passage or something we used to have to do in the old days. Uh, but honestly, it's a lot easier to just 
you know, set these up in the console, build them that way. It's easier to read, um, just makes for a, a, a tidier, more scalable way to implement things. So now that it's officially, you know, now that Microsoft officially, you know, took these and built them into the console, I don't know why they didn't do it to begin with. We're going to go over now how to set up laps, staying within the Intune GUI. All right, so over here in Intune, we're going to head to Endpoint Security. We're going to go down to Account Protection, and we're going to create a policy. Windows is our only option, and we are going to choose Local Admin Password Solution, aka LAPS. Let's create. So we're going to call this, uh, I'm going to call this my P1 LAPS policy. Default Windows LAPS Settings. All right, so take a look here. It's very nicely laid out for us, right? Um, you know, we don't have to go back here and look up the different settings. So it, it really is uh, cool. So if you're confused about anything, you get a nice little uh, summary right there. Let's start off by choosing our backup directory. This will be Azure AD only. Um, the password age in days. Now, what does that mean? This will be the maximum amount of days for that local admin password. The default's 30. You can take it down as I think as little as one. Uh, no, sorry, it looks like seven. Um, I'm gonna leave it on the default 30. You know, do with this what you wish. Okay, so we're not gonna configure the administrator account name. We're gonna create a new one. Um, so let's jump to password complexity. Uh, I generally stick with uh, the values four. That means large letters, small letters, numbers, and special characters. It's also the default right? Microsoft secure by default. It's going to have the kind of the setting that fits uh, the best for most folks, but obviously you can customize that. Uh, password length, I tend to leave that on 12. I don't know, 14 just seems like too much. Um, post authentication actions. This is where you can determine uh, what happens once that password's expired. Um, you can definitely read through your options. I leave it on the default of upon the uh, expiry of the grace period, the magic account password will reset. Okay, you can go as far as, uh, you know, make sure uh, you're logging off the account, reset the password, terminate all associated processes. So you can customize that. Obviously, work with your security team if you're not sure. Um, and then you can put a delay on that as well. So going down here, this is the most important feature, the automatic account management enabled. So we're going to set that to the target account will be automatically managed. Right. So this is the new account that we are creating uh, that will be deployed to the device. Right. So we're going to enable that. So because we're going to give it a uh, part of a name, we're going to give it a prefix. So we want it to use a randomized uh, suffix every time. So if my password is Rubix admin, uh, I want it to be Rubix admin dash and then have that uh, numeric suffix generated because that'll keep things secure. Not only will it keep my password rotating, it'll keep the username uh, different each time as well. Um, we're gonna manage that new custom administrator account. And you can see as opposed to the built-in administrator account. Okay, and then lastly, we're going to set our prefix. Uh, I'm gonna do Rubix dev admin. Now, if I just left uh, this part off, right and did the it will not use a suffix uh that would be the actual name but because i have that on i have the suffix option on this becomes a prefix okay so now we can click next okay uh we're going to leave our default tags and we are going to apply this to let's do uh this should be all devices target type include um we're going to do all our Windows devices as the filter, and that's fine. All right. All right, so now that that's been deployed, we're going to let that kick in on a machine and take a look at what it looks like. Okay, so give it another few minutes, and here I'm going to show you in the local user management portal under users, we have this guy, Rubik's Dev Admin. 330234. Okay, so that is our new LAPS account. And it's interesting because if we want to, that'll change every time we reset. So not only is the password changing, that is as well. 
So that is our local admin account. And if we go to the portal and we go to Windows and we go to our device, uh, this is the one. Yep, okay. And we select local admin password. There we go. So you can see the last rotation was pretty much just now. And the next rotation will be in 30 days. So I'm going to hit show local admin password. Now this is where I'm going to get the account name, right? And the password, which is random. And you can even see the SID identifier right here. So let's check that out. Let's go try to open the registry to see any changes here. We're going to do run as administrator. Okay. So it's local. So we're going to do dot backslash. We're going to do Rubik's Rubik's dev admin. And I forget the little, uh, three, 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 oh, two, three, four, three, three, oh, three, two, four. And the password I'm going to paste in here and let's hit yes. Okay. And that got us in, uh, as local admin. So we can look around software policies, Microsoft. And then policies. Okay. There's, yep. We can get into everything we got into before. Um, that's good. And we can even make, uh, changes if we want to open something as an admin. So if I want to do PowerShell, run as administrator, Rubik's dev admin. Okay. We'll type that password again. All right. And there we go. Now we are the administrator account. Awesome. And if we do want to rotate that sooner, uh, what we would do is we would go back to overview and the little ellipsis on the right, and we can select rotate local admin password. All right. So we'll give that a moment to finish. And when we come back here, we could see the rotation was just now. So yeah, not only now do we have a new password, we have a new username. Now the suffix is 371120. So if we do this again, let's open up the command line as an administrator. Rubik's dev admin 371120. And we'll type that out. That's a new password. And there we go. So it's very quick how it sets on the device. So I think now we got the best of both worlds. You know, when this first dropped, uh, a lot of folks like the idea of being able to manage the account name as well. Um, it was just, you know, why aren't they an Intune? Why do we got to type them all out as custom OMA URIs? I get it. While well, you could do it, this is a much cleaner way to do it. Uh, it still requires 24H2, but that's the version that, you know, we should be at uh, at this point. So let me know if you've implemented this, if you're still moving from like traditional on-prem laps to the new Intune Windows laps. Um, I think we have a lot of good features up here now. So jump in the Discord, share your thoughts, say hi if you're going to be at the events. We got a live stream uh, tomorrow at, I think it's 1 p.m. Eastern time. Let me check. Yeah, 1 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. That's just going to be an AMA while I shift through doing some work and I'll share it with all of you. But uh, yeah. We'll be seeing you.